in this second part of Signs and Symbols Ties to the Number 33. The first symbol I'm going to focus on has to do with the numerical digit 5 and its connection to the Biblical Earth. For any viewer who is unaware of the significance tied to the number 33, I recommend watching part 1 of this series before continuing. In part 1, I began by making the case that the number 33 of numerology was tied to the third part, or 33%, representing God's chosen people, spoken of in Zechariah, chapter 13, verses 8-9 to of the Bible. And it shall come to pass, that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, The Lord is my God. Words and phrases associated with these two verses in regard to God's third or 33% are found to equal 33 in Pythagorean and Chaldean numerology. For instance, the phrase one third equals 33 when translated using Chaldean numerology. A third equals 33 when translated using Pythagorean numerology. One third, true third, God's third, with a third, are his third, the 33% of, people, of Christ, Christ's, the elect, are my elect, my chosen, the few, the saved, the living. All equal 33 with either Pythagorean numerology, denoted with a P, or with Chaldean numerology, denoted with a C. You can calculate and verify all of these values for yourself, using either the numerology charts, or a numerology calculator like this one. I'll provide a link in the description, where you can download one for free. Alternatively, you can use an online calculator, like the one on Gematronator.com. When on the calculator page, go to Ciphers and select Full Reduction and Chaldean. Full Reduction is simply an alternate name for the Pythagorean method shown earlier. The values are calculated in exactly the same way. For example, with Pythagorean, the values for a third are 1, 2, 8, 9, 9, 4. 1, 2, 8, 9, 9, 4. The same in full reduction. Now, if there are words and phrases related to the elect of God, then you would expect there to be words and phrases related to God and Christ also. This is the case, as seen in the second column, which consists of some of the most identifiably biblical words and phrases that can be found out of the many that exist to all equal 33. Jesus is King, Crucified, Saviour, takes away sin, the word, one God. Many of these and others you may recognize from popular Bible verses, such as Romans 8.33. Who shall lay any thing to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. The elect, justified. 33. Exodus 6 verses 2-3. And God spake unto Moses, and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Jehovah, a form of the Hebrew name of God, from Hebrew, yod he vah -He, Yahuwah, the consonants of the name of God. God's name, Jehovah, Yahuwah. 33. Yeshua, the Hebrew name for Jesus Christ translates to Salvation. Yeshua, 33. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Takes away sin, 33. John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God's only, only Son, believe, 
believe in. All 33. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word 33. You can find many more examples like these in my video presentation dedicated to covering verses 8 to 9 of chapter 13 in the book of Zechariah. The words and phrases shown so far are just a fraction of the total that exists. Here is a larger compilation that you can look through. If you haven't already been convinced of the watermark of God underlying reality with the number 33 of numerology, then spend some time to browse through this list now. At any time throughout this video, you can pause and check the accuracy of any of these values for yourself. Also, now that you know the method for discovering them, you can find your own too. So to reiterate, the words and phrases highlighted in the first column establish the connection between God's third, or 33%, and the number 33 of numerology. The words shown in the second column reinforce the validity of this connection. Which brings me to the third group of words. The common theme between these is that they all reaffirm the biblical ancient Hebrew cosmology, which asserts that the earth is a flat stationary plane covered by a vast solid dome. Biblical earth, flat earth, flat plane, each one of these equals 33. This is where the number 5 comes into play in relation to this subject. Number 5 equals 33 in Pythagorean numerology. The word number equals 28, and adding the digit 5 brings the total to 33. This is the same for other numbers, so long as the sum of their digits add up to 5. For example, number 14 consists of the digits 1 and 4, which equal 5. Therefore, number 14 equals 33. The number 5's affinity to God isn't just represented in its relation to the number 33 of numerology but also in what it symbolizes visually, in its numeric form. The numerical representation of the number 5 that I'm referring to comes from what's called the Western Arabic or Hindu Arabic numeral system. It is the numeral system that is most widely used across the world. The numerical digit 5 here acts as a pictogram. A pictogram is a graphic symbol that conveys its meaning through its pictorial resemblance to a physical object like these examples. Digit 5 and pictogram also equal 33. The pictorial meaning being conveyed through the digit 5 is that the lines it consists of are representative of those drawn using both a square and compass. The square and compass are architect's tools. The square is used to measure and inscribe straight lines and right angles, while the drawing compass is used to inscribe circles or arcs. Using both tools, it is possible to inscribe a circle within a square. The circle within the square is a reference to the biblical flat earth worldview from the ancient Hebrew cosmology as mentioned earlier. It is the visual representation of the earth from the perspective of the creator in heaven. The circular line marks the boundary of the traversable portion of the earth from the center, all of which is inscribed on a square-based foundation. As referenced in Revelation chapter 7 verse 1, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. The map shown here is a close resemblance to the true layout of the continents of the world. This layout is what's called the North Pole Azimuthal Equidistant Projection, which is often abbreviated to simply the AE map. The AE map just so happens to equal 33 in Pythagorean and Chaldean numerology. In the middle of the map is the location of the Arctic Centre or Magnetic North Pole, which is encircled by the continents and oceans of the world. The oceans are kept in place by a ringed wall of ice that encompasses the boundary of the Earth. Outer ice, ice ring wall, encompass, 33. Job chapter 26 verse 10, He hath compassed the waters with bounds, until the day and night come to an end. Proverbs chapter 8 verses 27 to 29. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Outwards from this coastal boundary 
is a circular continent of snow and ice, which on the AE map would be referred to as Antarctica. At the end of the Antarctic boundary is the area where the walls of the vaulted dome enclosing the earth meet the land, known in the Bible as the firmament. Psalm chapter 19 verse 1 The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Handiwork 33 Genesis chapter 1 verses 6 to 8 And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Job chapter 37 verse 18 Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 22 It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Flat circle, glass dome, made dome, seas above, domed sea, domed sky, solid sky, hard ceiling, dome wall, in dome. All 33. The lights of the stars are fixed to the dome, which rotates around the earth like a chandelier, with Polaris, the north star, situated directly above the north pole centre. The sun and moon are inside the dome, and make their circuits over the flat stationary earth. Psalm chapter 19 verses 4 to 6 Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 5 The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. Sun inside, celestials, stars circuit, dome stars. 33. Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 to 19 And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 30 Fear before him all the earth, the world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Psalm chapter 96 verse 10 Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth, the world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Psalm chapter 93 verse 1 The Lord reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself, the world also established, that it cannot be moved, is stationary, immovable. 33. So here is the full-sized image that illustrates the ancient Hebrew conception of the universe spoken of earlier. Part of the accompanying text reads, The ancient Israelites divided the world into heaven, earth, sea, and the underworld. They viewed the sky as a vault, resting on foundations. God dwelt above the sky, hidden in cloud and majesty. The world was viewed as a disc, floating on waters, secured or moored by pillars. Earth is a disc, is moored on pillars, pillars. 33. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 9 He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. He lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill, to set them among princes, and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. Psalm chapter 75 verse 3 The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it. Selah. Job chapter 26 verse 11 The pillars of heaven tremble and are astonished at his reproof. Second Samuel chapter 22 verse 8 Then the earth shook and trembled. 
the foundations of heaven moved and shook, because he was wroth. Most individuals already familiar with this subject will have a rough idea of the foundations of the biblical earth consisting of pillars. Many, though, will share different interpretations regarding their appearance. So I'd like to provide some information that can help bring individuals closer to knowing them as they are. This top-down view, with the arrows, indicates where the corners are situated, and the position of the dome on this basic model. What I want to focus on mostly with this model is the nature of the pillars underneath, with the use of what's called pendentives. Pendentive, concave triangular sections of vaulting that provide the transition between a dome and the square base on which it is set and transfer the weight of the dome. In masonry, the pendentives receive the weight of the dome, concentrating it at the four corners where it can be received by the piers beneath. Pier, in architecture, a solid support designed to sustain vertical pressure, in particular, a pillar supporting an arch or a bridge, a section of a wall between windows or other adjacent openings. Pier arch, an arch supported on piers. Arch, in architecture, a masonry construction usually curved for spanning an opening and supporting the weight above it. Here are some words from the use of numerology to support this proposed model. The piers made piers, 33. The arches made arches, 33. Pendant, 33. This is in regard to the pendant nature of the pillars or piers. A dome table, table pillar, square based, bases square, cornered cornering, 33. Pillars on pillars, pillar based, is stationary, immovable, also 33. The stool, 33. This is with reference to Isaiah chapter 66 verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? So the use of the square and compass is also in relation to the corners of the piers, and the arcs between each one. One final detail I want to reiterate is that the entire creation is covered by the waters of the deep. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. This is an image I'll go into more depth with in the next part of this series, where I'll talk about aspects of both cosmologies. The greatest hurdle to get over for newcomers to this subject is the realisation that the globe and the heliocentric model of the universe have no proof to support them whatsoever. It is built on a false premise that is assumed to be true. Their proliferation is dependent on keeping individuals from entering the debate. Because once both models are stress tested for validity, only the biblical flat earth model is proven to be true, not assumed. As stated in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. All of the questions I can anticipate you will have wanting to be answered as a consequence of this video, I will do my best to answer in the next part of this series. Many of my subscribers will know that the square and compass are symbols synonymous with Freemasonry, so I'll also address that topic as well. I'm not finished with establishing my argument yet, so I'll have more proofs to provide too. I've intentionally designed this video to be beginner friendly, to make it easy for individuals to prove the biblical flat earth to others, with the help of numerology that you can use yourself. Be sure to check over each of the values, along with the relevant Bible verses. I'll provide links in the description that you can use as a resource for more biblical flat earth related content that can help to answer any questions you may have in the meantime, as well as debunk any presumptions for the globe model also. After seeing all of these numerology words, you may be wondering what the purpose of their usage was intended to infer. 
I compare their use to this analogy. Say I wanted to convince you absolutely that this small section of a jigsaw puzzle you see here is depicting the sun over a beach. Just with these few puzzle pieces, you may not be 100% convinced. But if I showed the same image, this time with many more pieces of the puzzle, then it would rule out all doubts as to what the final picture was, even without all the pieces in place. It's the same with the 33 words of numerology. With only a few, it is difficult to convince others of a correlation. But with a larger compilation of words and phrases, it is objectively plausible to argue a correlation. The words and phrases shown will always retain their 33 values. They will never waver. They share the same properties as truth. Truth does not waver or change. It always remains the same. It is timeless. It is simply that which is, independent of whether it is acknowledged or not by others for its validity. The numerology acts as objective proof of a biblical creator and everything else that stems from this premise including proof of the existence of the biblical flat earth. If you found the content in this video valuable and would like to view more like it, then subscribe to be notified when each new part of this series is uploaded.